As I said, I'm Pamela White, Kristen Helvey, who's with U.S. Software Marketing in the Boston area, um, who's standing in the back of the room right now, waving. <laughs> it was um, to give our introduction, and she's suffering from a cold today. So I'll be doing the welcome and introduction in her place. Um, after me will be Steve Martin, who is the product manager for All-in-One at Teamlink from Corporate Marketing. He'll be going through the product solution and some options for All-in-One iOS users. We'll be taking a quick break at that point, following with a Team Links demonstration to show you some of the highlights of the product. And then Susan Hoover, a consultant from digital, will be going into some of the implementation recommendations for moving from All-in-One iOS to Team Links. Technical considerations you may want to make, planning considerations in that. I'll be back up at the end to do our wrap up. How do we get started? Talk some about Team Links packaging, package services and that. And then we'll take any questions. Let's try to, if we can take questions as we go, we will. But because our schedule's tight, we may have to ask people to wait till the end of a section and then we'll take the questions. Okay? Then with that, I'm just going to do a, a brief introduction of Office Systems and Client Server. Now, we, we add this section only because there's sometimes people who are still trying to decide if client server is right for them and where client server is going and why it's so important. So this is just a little bit of an overview on why it should be important to Office Systems users as well. We start by looking at the evolution things have taken in general Office Systems over the last 30 years, and from the mainframe environments to the timeshare environments. And then in, in the 80s, we not only had the timeshare environment with VP terminal access, we also had the PCs proliferating and LAN starting up in, in those environments as well. I've included this chart, which is from Forrester Research, because it shows the trend over the last three years that people are now moving solidly into a piloting phase for client server systems. And this is a recommendation that digital makes for office users as well. It is time to start moving into piloting those. There's enough information on the market these days. There's enough products to understand what to do with them. It's time to start moving into the piloting phase and then with some rollout in the near future as well. When we look at what is causing all this to change with workgroup systems and client server, there's been a drastic shift in the way people are working um, from organizations that were very hierarchical, many levels, and a traditional management structure. We're getting much more peer-to-peer -peer dynamic work teams. And that's also facilitating people's needs to work closer together across geographies and across groups. It's not as common to have everyone in the same facility, in the same work team, to be getting something done. It, it many times comes from across organizations. As far as technological changes that have occurred in the last five or 10 years, the PC proliferation has done the most to give client server a boost. People want to take advantage of not only the graphical user interfaces that are at the desktop now that make it easier for people to use, they also want to take advantage of the power that is on those desktop machines. The LAN proliferation, while they've been a boon in some senses to moving towards client server, there are also some of the limitations for client server at this point. It's not necessarily um, the only solution to put in a LAN and assume you, you're on the right path towards client server. And the downsizing of applications as people want to move away from mainframe or even mini-based systems to some of these applications is causing a move to client server as well. This slide is used to show that what we see is not only a downsizing from the right-hand side of our screen of traditional mini and mainframe systems down to workgroup computing um, team type solutions, it's also a right-sizing upsizing from PCs and PC LAN systems, that that's where they're converging at a work group. And it's neither one is extinct, and neither one offers a total solution. So it's combining those two. And as I said before, we see that to try and make a team solution that works for only a single team and now adds complexity into the system to move amongst teams, or for a single LAN and would add complexity moving to multiple LANs, isn't the correct solution either for work groups. We see that those work groups have to come from not only lands in the organization, but your existing terminal server environments, time sharing environments. So as a summary, the next generation of office systems become one of the best things to start to move towards client server. There's many out of the box applications such as team links that we'll talk about today. There's many times PCs that are already using personal productivity tools 
at the individual level and that you just want to be able to integrate those across your LAN and your WAN. And the PC and work groups are a logical place to start developing business process automation, your workflow type of applications that can really benefit a team. Now, I'm not going to attempt to define client-server computing because I think everybody in the world has come up with a different definition, but it's really just breaking up of that application and it will vary depending on what application you're breaking up, whether you put more power at the desktop or more power back at the server. But it's being able to make two applications work across the network together, your client and your server. I've included in here a note from Forrester Research, again, on um, their definition of it. It just goes to show what their thoughts are as to where to put the power on that and to be able to still maintain a secure and reliable system. Now, the users that we talk to, why are they going towards client server? One of the main ones is an investment optimization, particularly at the desktop that they have. They want to optimize what they've already got there. They want to be able to use their personal productivity tools, but now blend them into work groups and team computing. They want to distribute resources across an organization and have service providers to those desktops, not necessarily single systems that provide everything to a user, but maybe a mail server and their database servers and query servers. They ask for it to be transparent, and there's not an IS department around that won't ask for it to be secure and reliable. And that's something to remember with client server systems that comes from the downsizing from your mini systems, many times more than upsizing from the LAN systems. It's client server provides a method of multi-vendor integration, not only across your hardware systems, but your software platforms as well. And the, op the opportunity for enhanced productivity is there because users can use the tools they're familiar with at their desktop. At the bottom, I've listed the downsizing, downcosting, right-sizing, every buzzword around. And those are always some of the things people are looking to achieve with client server. When we look at what they get when they do implement client server systems, they will get increased productivity. And they will control costs by sharing these resources. They will be able to have <coughs> single sources for printers and data, data access and that versus every LAN in the organization going after those same resources. In the digital environment, we've always been um, very concerned with protecting an investment. And that's how we look at a client server implementation too. But this isn't a, a throwaway. And you'll see that with your all-in-one system, we've got solid paths to take to move towards client server without getting rid of any of the current options you have. We see that in order for client server to be totally successful in an organization, it's important to satisfy the needs of three types of users within there and provide benefits to them. From your IS management with security and reliability being a big issue and control of applications and such, to your end users that want the flexibility of anything they want to choose for their personal productivity apps, being able to go at applications any way they want to. Sometimes those can be in conflict with each other, and striking that happy medium may be a challenge within an organization. There's also <coughs> the department managers who they want business application solutions. They want to be able to solve critical business solutions and make IS happy and make their end users happy, but more than anything, contribute to the bottom line of the company. Not to say the client server comes without some risks and impediments. We'd be doing an injustice if we didn't go through some of what those might be. Because everyone has to realize that client server will be a new paradigm within the organization. The retraining effort and the shifting of people's thoughts as to how they do work is something that has to be considered. You have to plan and also pilot when you're moving towards client server from a timeshare environment to see how people will adapt to this, what type of loads it'll put on the system, changes in document storage, how people will go at them, people will share documents. You have to really weigh the cost effectiveness of client server computing. There are additional costs involved with the intelligent desktops, much more expensive than we're used to with VTs, and with um, data storage for true client server, rather than the shared type environment from all in one. It's going to be important to determine who is responsible for what. As client server starts to break up the computing power, 
where does the responsibility lie for troubleshooting it or for choosing applications? And multi-vendor support. You'll be bringing in a multitude of software and hardware vendors probably from the desktop to your data center. And so it'll be important to see how you'll service that so that you don't get people pointing at each other. And be careful of the person in the organization who has the don't rock the boat attitude. And sometimes that comes from within our all-in-one groups as well. We know we're providing a good solution to our users. So it's like, well, why do we need to make this shift? Well, the organization is moving that way. The PCs that are cropping up in the organization are starting to move that way. So we have to try and get rid of the don't rock the boat attitude. We have to take in those that have it outside our group and say, this is the best way for us to do our computing power in the future. <coughs> now, why is client server important to iOS? Well, for one thing, it's a good way to revitalize what's a legacy application, or some people like to use that term, in an organization, and add in some of those benefits without necessarily getting rid of what you currently have. That's important because it continues with investment protection and makes use of what you still have. You want to be able to leverage the hardware and software that you have. You don't want to necessarily change all your networking structures, change all your document storage structures. It will utilize the industry standard productivity tools, Microsoft Word and Excel, things people are using. And that's why we think that can be important to the all-in-one base to make use of those tools that are out there. And it still provides some security and reliability within the system. With TeamLinks as a desktop integration platform too, it provides IS with some control over how these applications integrate together while still providing that choice to users and takes advantage of the intelligent desktop as we talked about earlier. Our goal from today's session is to talk to you that there's a commitment to our all-in-one base with the TeamLinks product set and a path for you to get there. We still believe that all-in-one iOS is a very solid product in the market. We have new and additional markets opening up to all-in-one all the time, both outside our country and add-on installations and new installations within the U.S. There's plans that we will be porting all-in-one to the OpenVMS AXP platform. And Steve Martin will talk some, too, about how we'll be breaking all-in-one up to be more client-server in the future. We see this as a continuation of the all-in-one phase two program, and we're coming out to our customers to make sure everyone understands that we're committed to helping you as you move ahead in the future. Uh, my name is Steve Martin. Um, uh, I've been involved with Office for a number of years. Right now I'm responsible for marketing all-in-one and team links. Uh, this morning I'm actually going to break two rules here. But let me start out by talking about team links. Uh, again, we're making the assumption that uh, everyone here is familiar with all-in-one except for one gentleman. Uh, team links is a product that uh, just started shipping uh, last fall. Uh, First and foremost, Team Links is a family of desktop clients. Now, we only have one shipping today. It's Team Links for Windows. Uh, but when we announced Team Links for Windows, we also announced a statement of intent to do a Macintosh and a Motif client. The concept of Team Links is that it will be server independent. In effect, what we're saying is the user has the desktop environment, and we don't care where they get the services from. Now today, Team Links has one server, an open VMS server. Uh, we have announced a statement of intent for Unix and NT servers. And one of the key points of this presentation is to talk about how all-in-one will also be a services provider. The whole concept behind Team Links was really for digital to maintain its market leadership in what is commonly called the office marketplace. Uh, although uh, those terms are changing and people are now talking about workgroup systems and workgroup computing, Team Links is the next generation of Office system. It is built on a client-server architecture, but it's more than Office automation. Digital believes that Office automation is a done deal. That doesn't mean everybody has automated the Office, but the tools and the technology are there. Team Links and the next generation of Office is to go beyond Office automation, word processing, and mail, 
to actually help businesses do the business they're in. So we're now talking about re-engineering the way people work. And that is a basic concept that we've delivered with the uh, Team Links messaging. Um, the other concept that Pam introduced is the concept of work groups. More and more today, people are trying to solve problems with distributed groups, people on different desktops in different locations and organizations around the organization, or even external to the organization. So Team Links is really a workgroup systems product uh, concentrating on what we call a logical workgroup, which basically says the back-end services, we don't care uh, what desktop, what application the users are on. The strategy for Team Links is really to design to what we call the next generation desktop. By that, I mean a very high-powered 386, 486 PC, uh, running Windows, uh, a Mac System 7. Uh, these are not for your uh, AT class PCs. Uh, the other thing that we are assuring as we roll out the Team Links family is that people will be able to work with, communicate, and share with other people irrespective of desktop. This is real key for yourselves moving up from the all-in-one environment where by assumption I'm assuming you have a few of those terminals around, uh, probably be around for the next 10 to 20 years. I actually went into an account about six months ago that still had VT52s they were in use. And those of you who have been with digital for a long time, you know VT52s we haven't sold or supported for a while. So these things don't go away. So we're going to make sure people, irrespective of what desktop they're on, they'll be able to work with each other. The key to the strategy, however, is that we are going to extend the desktop environment. When we were looking at building Team Links, uh, we had two options. We could go the HP route, which basically said, we'll take over the desktop environment and we'll add our own proprietary level. Or we could go the open route, which basically says, you have chosen Windows or Mac, uh, depending upon what's on the desktop, uh, or more importantly, your user may have chosen it, because of the environment, because of the look and the feel, because of the applications. So what we decided to do in building Team Links is to build on top of and extending that desktop environment. So in the case of Team Links, we use Microsoft conventions. Uh, everything is using a DDE or a DLL, uh, Dynamic Data Exchange or Dynamic Link Libraries, uh, so that any Windows compliant application can make use of it. We will do the same thing with the Macintosh platform. All right, those of you who know all-in-one will look real quick at this definition and say it looks the same, and it is. Uh, the concept of Team Links is to provide a, an integration platform that integrates the user and their applications on the desktop with the rest of the enterprise, transparently and seamlessly. The other concept of Team Links is to make sure it's customizable. Because we're not delivering pure and simple office automation, we're delivering solutions to your business problem. Now we have not, and, and later on we'll talk about it, we have not published the APIs yet, even though we do have third parties writing to them, uh, because we want to make sure that engineering is satisfied that the APIs they're using, that's the application programming interfaces, are solid. But once we will do that, we will publish those APIs so that you yourself could write an application and make use of all of those services. So the concepts and what we learned with All-in-One, we actually brought into the Team Links environment, just using uh, newer technology and clearly graphical user interface on the desktops. I'm going to very quickly move through what Team Links is as a product. And the reason why I'm going to do that is twofold. One, I only have 40 minutes. Uh, and secondly, uh, Sue Hoover will actually be demonstrating the product to you. And uh, you really have to understand and look at Team Links. Uh, Team Links is, for Windows, is a Microsoft Windows application, look and feel. Uh, engineering, in the course of building Team Links, uh, used a process which we call concurrent engineering. They'd actually build a base level, put it out into field test sites, get input. Uh, bring it back, change the input based on customer comment, send it back out. Uh, that was good because we believe what we uh, shipped is what customers wanted. Uh, it didn't help our schedule too much because, you know, it's kind of, it's good to respond to customers, but it's kind of hard to really predict uh, what kind of requirements they have when they really get involved in the cycle. 
But the feedback we've gotten from customers and consultants is that the look and feel is, is really excellent. So let's walk through Team Links. Uh, you're right. There's a couple of labels that don't show up here. There's basically a Team Links information package. That's the kernel of Team Links. And that has your mail, and it has uh, workflow automation, a product called Team Route, and some, the office filing services and some converters. And then there's a series of optional products that come as part of the Team Links platform. We're going to walk through those uh, very quickly. Mail. Uh, Team Links for Windows, and again, everything I say here for Windows uh, will be appropriate for the Macintosh as well, ships with it an X.400 P2 compliant mail user agent. The architecture of this is that it is server independent. Today, the server is required to be a DEC mail work server. That is our X.400 mail server. Uh, it is a client server mail full function product. It has a lot of Windows user interface um, and includes a lot of uh, full featured X.400 P2 attributes. Uh, a lot of those you'll notice if you're all-in-one users are, are features that you've been looking for with all-in-one. Blind carbon copies, confidentiality flags, expiry in, uh, indicators, etc. So mail is a basic component. Uh, but more importantly, we go beyond mail, and I'm going to spend uh, a little bit of time here on group conferencing. How many here, I'm assuming everyone here is at least running all-in-one version 2.4? Okay. Everyone knows what group conferencing is? Good. So I won't sell you on the benefits of notes. Uh, it's really a nice online communication vehicle. Uh, there is a Windows client for notes. Uh, the important thing here is that it's making use of the same server that your all-in-one users are making use of. So it's just a client front end to the note server. OK. I do want to spend a little bit of time, though, talking about TeamRoute. Uh, TeamRoute is a workflow automation product that ships as part of the TeamLinks Information Manager. There is also an option for all-in-one called TeamRoute for all-in-one. And you can send routing templates between the two user bases. So the benefits I'm talking about here is available today for your all-in-one users as well. Basically, out of the box, TeamLinks is a, is a very robust workflow uh, or routing uh, approval mechanism. It allows you to route and track, I'll use the term documents, but in digital's term, it's really anything. It can be anything from a document to an executable file to a pointer to an application or database in the network. It has a Windows UI. It's what we call a uh, mail-based application, meaning it uses mail as its transport. So what can you do with uh, Team Links? First of all, this uh, slide has to be updated. But conceptually, what you can do with this on day one is start to automate simple processes, whether it be a telephone routing request, whether it be a travel, travel authorization. And it is all done electronically. At any point in time, the user, the creator, or anyone who he or she has given the rights to can check on the status. So let me give you a scenario of what you can do. You can take, say you, uh, I'll give you an example of what one of our customers did uh, with uh, an all-in-one option, uh, but it's the same concept, workflow automation. They actually wanted to reduce their inventory. So they automated the purchase order request and review and approval cycle. You can create a template for your internal purchase request, distribute it, by the way, and then the user can request that and then actually route it around to the people who need to approve it. At any point in time, the user can check on the status. So rather than doing what we at Digital have historically done, and that is, particularly if you want to travel to Europe and the 28 signatures, trying, you know, secretary spending an hour tracking down where this thing is, you can go to the network, and the network will immediately say who has done what to that document and will tell you where it is. So you can call up and say, OK, Mary, you're have, you have sitting on my purchase order request. You know, it's really urgent. Can, can you do that for me? Now, the, I'll get a little bit into futures. Today, it basically is a sequential routing. Uh, the user can determine whether what's being sent is revisable or not. Uh, this is important, for instance, if uh, what you're sending around is a capital authorization and you don't want someone along the route to change the value of it. 
uh, and the user can again uh, attach any binary file. You can mail pointers to a network application uh, or a service. The other thing you can do with TeamRoute, uh, as we implement client-server computing, particularly coming from an all-in-one base where you have a very strong system management, system administrative base, is we shift uh, two capabilities with TeamRoute. One is to do a PC audit so that you can sit in your corporate headquarters in Boston and do a worldwide update of all your TeamLink's clients to find out what software is installed, what version of that software is installed, and you can do a worldwide update. You can, at a single location, update software worldwide using TeamRoute. Most importantly, when the user on the other end actually processes that TeamRoute template, <laughs> for instance, they actually install that updated software, the creator or the system manager actually gets confirmation back in the mail confirming that user X has upgraded to Lotus 123 version 28. This is particularly important for customers who are trying to manage the licensing of PC software, making sure that they have purchased the right number of licenses. So TeamRoute is a really robust, really next generation mail based application. We're really excited with it and Sue I'm sure uh, is going to uh, cover that in a little bit of detail because it's really easy to use. The important thing I do want to point out again is that it, there is an option for all-in-one as well. So you can have your PC users and your VT users on all-in-one uh, share the uh, templates back and forth. Uh, the next major piece of uh, Team Links is a file service. Uh, those of you who uh, use Windows or DOS uh, get very restricted, or at least I do, by the, the 8.3 naming convention. And it's not very intuitive to most office people, particularly to all-in-one users, if all of a sudden they have to do directory, backslash, subdirectory, backslash, subdirectory, uh, text, dot, dot. Uh, it's sort of not intuitive. So what Team Links did is added a natural language filing service on the Windows environment. Draw a folder document, uses natural language naming, but more importantly, we don't care where the contents of the files are. This, the mail folder here actually happens to be sitting on my VAX, it's my deck mail works, my mailboxes. My local drawer is my hard disk sitting on the PC. Uh, deck world and main are actually all-in-one iOS drawers. So the user can get access to multiple drawer types, but it's presented to the user in a single user interface style. The only difference they're going to see is today if I double click on a folder in a shared drawer that's located in Reading, England, it takes a little while to get over there to get it, as opposed to if I double clicked on something in my hard disk. Now I will point out there will be one difference with the Macintosh client. Because the Macintosh already has what I would call a very nice, useful file capability, we are not going to replace the Mac file structure. So we are adding on top of that. We were forced to do this because of the Windows, uh, the DOS file structure. So again, it's uh, really trying to simplify the user's view to multiple repositories of documents around the network. Embedded in Team Links as well are a couple of conversion capabilities because clearly we're introducing multiple application types. We use the CDA converter library, which we actually started shipping with all in one in version 2.3. Uh, we use uh, key, some KeyPack converters and some Halcyon converters. Uh, the way Team Links is set up is the user sets up a profile and he tells the mail server, uh, I use Word or I use Amy Pro or I use WordPerfect. And what the system does is it monitors inbound messages. And if I have a WIPS Plus document coming from another all-in-one user, it will convert it before I grab it. So all of the conversion through the mail is done uh, on the fly so that when the user receives it, the document or the spreadsheet is in a format that's usable on the desktop. The other key piece of Team Links is data access. We have a product called Deck Query, which allows you to go out, and it's an option that allows you to go out and actually query databases anywhere on the network, whether they be RDB files or Oracle files or even IBM DB2 files. Uh, you can go out and query it, bring the data back to the desktop and make use of it. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about later is how some third parties are 
integrating into team links. This is an example of where uh, an integration into team links, you'd be able to take that query and bring it right into a spreadsheet like 123 or Excel. How did we do this? Uh, this is a pictorial or a graphic view of how we wrote team links. Basically, what we did is we set up all of the network services uh, using standard Microsoft conventions, dynamic data exchanges or dynamic link libraries. These are macros that are available to any Windows compliant application. So in effect, and we'll use Microsoft as an example, Microsoft is writing, in fact they're in field test now, um, macros that they will ship in their off-the-shelf product. If you go into Egghead and you buy Word for Windows version next, uh, in that package will be some macros that will be Team Links ready. When the user installs that piece of software, it will sniff the system to see if Team Links is installed. If it is, it will give the user some incremental options. Now, what are the options? Well, the first thing it will do is from the Word pull-down menu, you could send something. And rather than exiting Word and going into another application, you click, drag, and drop on Send, and up will come the address dialog box of our Team Links mail client. You fill that out, you address it, and you send it off on the network. The user never has to leave the application environment, in this case, Microsoft Word. The other thing they are writing to is our network file service DLL. What does that mean? That basically means, again, from Microsoft Word, the user has available to him or her any file service available to Team Links. So they can grab things out of the all-in-one file cabinet or put it in. The Pathworks file service, the local hard disk, it doesn't matter, and it will be viewed as part of that natural language naming. So you would actually be able to create a Word for Windows document and call it my FY98 marketing programs. All right? You won't be restricted to the 8.3 naming convention. Same thing with Excel. Uh, Windows is uh, writing a dynamic uh, access to deck query so that you could actually use the background benefits of deck query to go out and query a database and bring the results right into Excel. Now, and eventually they, uh, what's following later will be a CDA converter. Now, we're going to talk about the other vendors that are writing to Team Links, but conceptually this is the architectural design. And that's why we decided to use standard Microsoft conventions so that it is a total open desktop integration environment so that any Windows application uh, can be integrated. And it, it really is quite easy. Okay, the integrator's workbench, this is the thing I talked about a little bit. That's where we will actually publish uh, the tools and the templates so that you could go off, uh, build your own applications, and make calls to our network services. Again, that's a future option. Uh, we, we, we learn from all-in-one. We don't want to go out and have a lot of customers doing a lot of customization and then have us change uh, an application programming interface halfway through it. Uh, VideoTax, everyone here familiar with VTX? Great library services capability. Digital has saved more money on that application than anything else. Uh, rather than uh, killing millions and millions of trees and distributing around the globe, uh, more and more of our relatively stable information is available online. There is a Windows client. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that. Uh, DeckWrite, uh, everyone here familiar with DeckWrite, our desktop publishing product? Uh, it also will be integrated into Team Links. Let's go into the digital and Microsoft relationship. What did we announce? Well, I talked a little bit about it already, and that's the engineering aspect of them actually uh, extending their off-the-shelf products uh, with uh, macros to make use of the Team Link services. Uh, digital manufactures, sells, and supports the Microsoft applications. And as I said, uh, Microsoft is doing uh, add-ons to call our macros in Word and Excel. The other key point is that Digital uh, also used Visual Basic for most of the user interface in Team Links. Uh, in fact, I have some good news for you. Uh, I think Digital broke uh, the Windows environment. Uh, 
we are probably the, and in fact, we believe we are the most complex application built on Windows. So we really stretched Visual Basic, and let me assure you, our cohesion folks uh, were called in almost on a daily basis, because let me assure you, there's not a lot of case tools to build robust Windows-based applications. Um, we are going to be uh, using Visual Basic V2 in the next release, the next uh, functional release of Team Links, uh, and uh, we've already done some testing with that, and that will improve the performance. Uh, the other key piece of the agreement, and I'm sure you're all aware of that, is uh, we are going to be licensing Windows NT on our Alpha AXP platforms. Okay. Uh, I've already talked about Microsoft apps, uh, but again, the concept here is uh, basically on this, what this is showing you is I click, dragged, and dropped on the file and said send, and the Team Link's create message, message uh, box opened up, and I'm now addressing it. So again, that's how seamless the integration is. Calendaring. Uh, when we announced Team Links, we did not announce any calendaring capability. Um, and if I listen to every sales account manager in the room, um, everybody in the world uses calendaring. Just as an aside, all of you all in one users, how many of you use the time management capability? OK. How many of you have more than 10% of your users using time management? That's actually high. OK. Uh, we did announce uh, a capability. Uh, again, another uh, agreement with a third party called PowerCore Incorporated. PowerCore builds a product called Network Scheduler 3. Uh, it is a market leader in, quite frankly, a very fragmented market, uh, which is PC LAN based time management. Uh, uh, Network Scheduler 3 is a full functional uh, time management product. It does things like personal scheduling, group scheduling, resource scheduling. Uh, it is a LAN-based application, so it uses a database on the LAN. But to do scheduling from LAN to LAN, it is a mail-enabled application. So it uses mail as the transport. What PowerCore is doing is actually embedding calls to the Team Links X.400 mail uh, capability so that it can use Team Links to schedule across a wide area network or from LAN to LAN. Uh, that product is in field test, uh, and it is currently scheduled to ship by PowerCore uh, on February 8th of this year. I again want to point out, this is not a special product from digital. This is PowerCore's standard off-the-shelf network scheduler 3 product, where they are simply embedding the macros to call our uh, DDEs and DLLs. Very graphical product. Uh, I'll tell you, from someone who uses time management in all-in-one, uh, it took me a long time to get used to uh, this kind of a user interface. Uh, but it really is a good product. We're getting a lot of good uh, feedback from it. Uh, in addition, we announced, uh, by the way, as a statement of intent, that we will also do a Mac client as well. But we also announced that we will be doing a time management gateway between Network Scheduler 3 and all-in-one time management. Again, interoperability across users is first and foremost. Uh, that gateway will probably is scheduled to trail the release of Network Scheduler 3 by a quarter. So you're looking at probably the May time frame for the gateway. That will basically allow all-in-one users and Network Scheduler 3 users to do two things. Scan for free time with each other and schedule with each other. Okay? Okay. Uh, Lotus 1.2.3 uh, has already announced its intent uh, to integrate their applications with Team Links. In fact, they did an excellent job with uh, Lotus 1.2.3. Uh, I don't know if anyone here went to Decus, uh, but we actually had their field test version of 1.2.3 integrated for Team Links. They went one step further. They actually integrated with Team Route. So from Lotus 1.2.3, you can actually click, drag, and drop on routing, and it brings out the Team Route template. Uh, and it's really neat because the, Pam, Pam used the concept of a paradigm shift, and it really is different. PC users tend to like to work within an application. So they don't, they don't like to get out of an application to do something else. Um, and we're finding that already because we're getting feedback, for instance. Uh, we want the ability to put more 
dialog boxes on the Team Links Information Manager to call other apps so that I don't have to go back to the Windows Program Manager box. Uh, so WordPerfect also has announced that their Windows, I think it's 5.2, uh, will call Team Links as well. Again, this will be their standard product. And I can also tell you there are two, and based on a call I had yesterday, likely three other uh, major software vendors uh, that will be integrating into Team Links. We're really excited. Uh, there are more vendors integrating into the Team Links platform than any other vendor's platform, uh, with the exception, of course, the Windows operating system in and of itself. Uh, I think that speaks well, one, for the very quick reputation Team Links has gotten as far as favorable feedback is concerned, and more importantly, the openness of the platform. In fact, it was a real coup when I actually saw a PC Week advertising dropout. You know those little cards that drop out when you're on a plane or whatever? Um, and it was a survey card. And one of the desktop environments they actually had listed was Team Links. And uh, those of you who have been struggling with digital uh, for the last few years and getting uh, to be a major player in the PC marketplace, uh, we thought that was a major coup. Okay. Talk a little bit about future directions here. Um, we do have mail filtering for all-in-one called the all-in-one personal assistant. Uh, we will be adding to that to the team links at some future date. Uh, all-in-one iOS brings a lot of great work group sharing capabilities with version 3 of all-in-one. We will be adding that to team links as well. Um, facts and image uh, will clearly be added and some content-based retrieval. In fact, the whole concept of the information manager is that that's really a lens into all the possible pieces of information and data the user can get into. And in the future, you'll see new technologies like filtering and content-based retrieval so that can actually be a data lens. And we don't care whether it's a file or a database or an external information source like Dun & Bradstreet or Associated Press. Um, so conceptually, V1 of the information manager is just giving you seamless access to documents. But the strategy is that it's really going to be extended to include access to any kind of information. More desktops. The Macintosh will be next. Uh, the Macintosh, again, we won't provide a file service capability, i.e. change the way the Mac filing service looks. Uh, so we are going to use the Mac uh, file capability. We will be shipping mail and team route and access to the all-in-one file cabinet. Uh, it is next, and I know we can't talk about dates. Uh, but it's probably going to be around the time frame that uh, we all have to send this little document to uh, Uncle Sam uh, regarding our taxes. So without giving you a date, because I'm not allowed to give you a date, uh, that's probably the time frame you're going to see the Macintosh client. Uh, and uh, we're also going to add a Motif client. That, quite frankly, is further out. Uh, the next server we're working on is a Unix server. And uh, NT is a very high priority for us. Uh, right now, we're tracking to see when NT ships so that we can uh, start working on that. Uh, we're also going, particularly for this audience, uh, we're also going to be improving Team Links and All-in-One so that Team Links can use All-in-One as its server. Uh, and the, the series of slides I've added will talk about it. Uh, but today, those of you who have looked at Team Links, the first thing digital tells you is, well, you have to install this different mail server. Uh, what we mean by the use of all-in-one is all-in-one will be the services provider so that you will be able to put team links on your user's desktop and they will make use of their all-in-one services they use today. Network.dat, if that's what you use for directory services, they'll use all-in-one for their mail services. Uh, they'll use your same distribution list. Uh, we'll go through that in a little bit more in, uh, later. Uh, support multiple LANs. TCP IP is next. Uh, again, we're not supposed to talk about dates, but that is real soon. Um, I would look for that certainly by St. Patty's Day. Uh, now, we, we in fact were going to, and, and our plan of record is to do IPX to follow that. Uh, and our strategy is still to do IPX, but based upon Novell's purchase of USL, uh, we're going to keep a close eye on the marketplace because we're starting to get the feeling talking to software vendors and customers that there's going to be a very quick move to IP as the uh, LAN protocol. So our strategy is to support IPX, but we're going to continue to look at it to see if uh, IP takes over real quick. 
So TCP IP will be the first protocol we'll support. That's not a DECnet protocol. Uh, we talked a little bit about the rest, uh, the integrator's workbench. OK, uh, I'm going to skip very quickly over the benefits. The real key, the real benefit to Team Links, and I'm going to give you an all-in-one perspective. Uh, if you're an all-in-one user today, how many here are system managers? OK, users? or business managers. Okay? The key to an all-in-one user today is the key benefit of Team Links is we're going to allow you to keep all those real obnoxious end users happy who either went out on their own and bought Windows and they're sitting there saying, OK, connect me, or they're demanding a Windows or Mac user interface. We're going to basically let you put that on the desktop, let them use the applications of choice so that they're happy and let you to continue to use all-in-one as your back-end server, continue to use your applications you've written uh, on all-in-one. And let's get, so what are we doing with all-in-one? Well, first and foremost, our strategy with all-in-one, first and foremost, is to keep it the industry leader in time-shared integrated office systems. Digital does not believe the terminal is dead. Uh, it will be around for a long time. In fact, we still have new customers buying all-in-one for terminal users. However, it looks like uh, right now about eight out of every ten seats added to all-in-one systems are now PCs or Macintoshes. So it's real clear that the market is very quickly moving toward a distributed desktop environment. So our key goal is to make sure we can protect your investment in all-in-one so that it can provide services to attached or distributed desktop clients. And make no bones about it. Uh, we want to establish Team Links as the next generation all-in-one desktop client. Uh, at some point in the future, 1998, nah, year 2020, maybe, we expect that every front end to all-in-one will be a Team Links client. Uh, my guess is, is terminals will be around for a while. They may be around forever. Um, so we are going to establish Team Links as the strategic desktop device, make it as simple as front ending a Team Links client to an all-in-one server, ensure interoperability with non-Team Links users uh, so that we can protect your investment. Now, very quickly. How can we do this? And this is something that I always get asked by customers because they always say, you know, gee, timeshare office systems, you know, aren't they dead? Uh, you know, IBM killed uh, profs or is in the process of killing profs. I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about what all-in-one really is so you can see why all-in-one always was an architecture, not a timeshare office system. Yes, digital did a very dis big disservice by marketing it as a timeshare office system. In fact, my marketing partners in Japan, I should have learned from them. They never marketed all-in-one as an integrated office system. From day one, they marketed it as an application integration and development platform. In fact, in Deck World, when I went over there and I was helping support them, they didn't even have it in the office area. It was sitting in the integration area. And we have to keep in mind that that's what all-in-one was built to do. All-in-one was architected with all of the client-server concepts that are being delivered today. Separation of form from function. Doesn't matter where the UI runs versus where the application runs. Except the ability to publish the APIs so that other application vendors can write to those applications and services. And of course, the use of common services by all applications. This is how All-in-One was architected back in the early 80s. In fact, Charlotte actually started to build it in late, I think it was 79. As we move All-in-One to a client-server architecture, all we're doing is changing some of the processing that's done today on a VAX and moving it down to the PC. So how are we doing that? Well, the first step is, uh, well, this is, oh, yeah, I need to introduce this slide because I, I have this habit of creating words. <laughs> and the uh, word du jour is serverizing. 
Uh, it's not a word. I guarantee you that because uh, Houghton Mifflin spell check are both within all-in-one WIPS Plus and within Microsoft Word doesn't recognize it. Um, serverizing is basically, I'm going to define it the last slide here, is taking this timeshare image of all-in-one and turning it into a network server so that desktops can use things in it without having to invoke an image. Uh, but basically what you're going to see is that we're going to serverize things like uh, mail services, distribution lists, nicknames, all the way down to the applications themselves. So that you could, if you wanted to, rather than rewrite an application just for the sake of making Windows users happy, keep the application running on the VAX, take a product or a tool like WinRMS, write a Windows front end to it, and just client server, but you've got a Windows front end using an application on the back end VAX. So, implementing common network services. It's not new. We started with version 2.3 of all-in-one. Today, all-in-one, iOS, can use every network service that a Team Links client can use, with the exception of two, mail services and Team Run. All the others they share. They all, use, they all can use Mailbus DDS. They all do use Mailbus for transport. They all use the CDA converter library. They all use the same VaxNote server. They all use the same VideoTech server. So in fact, over the last few years, digital has been moving toward this environment. Unfortunately, we did the back end first. And everyone kept saying, where is it? Well, the proof point is the desktop, and that's what I'm talking about today. So the back end, using the network services, we've already done. Now the, now the next part of the problem is getting those desktop clients to be able to use all-in-one services. The first step for that was in version 3 of all-in-one when we serverized the all-in-one file cabinet. It's actually a capability called a common file tab. Architecturally, it's so that from a desktop you can get access to any file cabinet around the network. So we've already delivered the first serverization of an all-in-one service, and that's the file cabinet. Now you might ask why the file cabinet first. Uh, one, we needed to do it so that we could access multiple file capabilities, but more importantly, we, we needed to make sure that users, either as they migrated off of all-in-one to Team Links, uh, or wanted to coexist, could get access to their old files and documents. But most importantly, we wanted to make sure that users could share things uh, irrespective of what desktop. So in effect, the concept of all-in-one in the future is that it is a services provider, just like the other services like VaxNotes, Videotex, Mailbox, to any desktop client around the network. Pure and simple, we are taking all-in-one and we're going to serverize it. And that basically means, in addition to the common file cabinet server, you will see future releases of all-in-one uh, that will write SPI, service provider interfaces, into other capabilities of all-in-one. I won't give you a time frame. Uh, it is uh, well within this calendar year. Uh, but we will be announcing, for instance, the next step is to hit the mail. The first step was the file cabinet. The next step is mail. So you literally will be able to put Team Link's client on all-in-one user's desktop, and they will be able to use whatever directory service you're managing out of your all-in-one system, network.dat or DDS through uh, all-in-one. They'll be able to use the exact same distribution list that you use today. They'll be able to use the personal nicknames or the personal distribution lists. In fact, there's even a tool available today that can take those uh, out of all-in-one to populate a Team Link's path. Uh, so mail will be the next step that we, uh, we implement in, in moving toward all-in-one in a fully distributed environment. My name is uh, Sue Hoover, and I'm an office consultant out of the Chicago office with Pam. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. What I'd like to do is spend some time talking about what's going to be involved in actually moving users and bringing up a team link system from your current all-in-one iOS system. 
Now, I know you've been asked this several times, but I'm going to ask it one more time. How many people are actually, as part of your job, going to have to worry about how you move people from one system to another? Okay, that is most of the audience. I assume the people who didn't raise their hand must be high-level managers who don't do any real work, right? <laughs> For those of you who, most of you are doing real work, hopefully I'll be able to answer most of your questions in terms of what's involved in doing this. Now, one thing that I want to do is just deviate for a second here and draw a little picture because I think it's not, it might, we might not have made it clear to you what we're talking about about these different service servers. Team Links, digital has this thing with names. I mean, every time we downsize, we say you should get rid of the people who come up with the names because all we do, I think, is confuse customers with half of our names, right? Team Links is the piece of software that you install on the workstation, so on your PC, on your Mac, or whatever. That's what we're calling Team Links, the piece that you install on your workstation. Team Links is the client side. The client needs to get services from somewhere. Today, what I'm going to be talking to you about is getting mail service from what we're currently calling the, de the DEC MailWorks server. Previous name was the all-in-one mail work server, and I think a couple of names before that. This is the piece of software today that provides mail services to this Team Links client. Now, what Steve was talking about is you also today run an all-in-one integrated office system, or iOS system. And that's providing mail services today to your VT client. One of the things you'll see in the demonstration is that Team Links can put files in multiple places. You can have a file cabinet that's on a floppy, which is, I, which is what I use to transfer documents from the PC on my desk to my laptop at home, because I find that easy. So that's one place you could put a file cabinet. You could also put a file cabinet on your hard disk, and I usually have one of those, too. You can also have a file cabinet up here on the MailWork server. And since I'm a current all-in-one iOS user in the office, I also have an all-in-one iOS file cabinet. And what you'll see in the Team Links demonstration is that you get little icons for each of those little file cabinets and drawers. So you see a little icon for your floppy, your hard disk, your Mac. You also see an icon in those documents. And you can click and drag between them that whole thing. Now, one of the things that Steve was saying is we're looking at serverizing is the word he used all in one, which means instead of using the DEC MailWork server, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, at some point in the future, you will have the option of serving mail directly from here. So does that make some sense and clear up some of the confusion? Are there any questions then again about the, the naming? It's the same team links down here. So if you choose to do a pilot now, which is what I'm going to be talking about, with team links on the PC and the Mac down here. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I get this every time I move. I can hear my voice <laughs> moving. If you do a pilot on team links and the Mac down here with this server today, you will not have to change anything on the end user side when the iOS server becomes available. You can bring up your people with this for pilot. You can do a lot of the learnings we're going to be talking about today. And then you can decide whether you want to continue to migrate away from this and eventually just get rid of this and use the mail product and do a mail work server. Or if you want to do it the other way around, not use this and keep this as your server. You're going to have a choice in the future. So what I'm going to be talking about today is this server here. But keep in mind that you will have a choice in the future to go this way or to go that way. If you have questions as we go along, I can come back to this. Any questions right now? OK. Let's start up here. What I found in Chicago is people go, people have, you know, you go into the accounts, and they've spent a lot of money putting big PCs on people's desks. 496 PCs, 16, 24 megs of memory on the PC. And what do the people use those PCs for most of the day? What do they use them for in your accounts? Terminal emulators, that's right. Spend all this money putting that PC on the desk, and it's used most of the day as a $500 VT terminal to get into all-in-one because they need to do mail, they need to access information, and the information they need is on all-in-one. So in most of the accounts, 
you're starting to get just a little bit of pressure from the end users and from management that maybe there's a better way of doing this. Maybe if we're spending all this money to put these PCs on people's desks, we should look at ways of giving them a GUI interface and being able to use the power of the PC. Now, I know none of you are here today because of that pressure. You're all here because of the free coffee and donuts, right? <laughs> none of your management is telling you there's got to be a better way to do this. None of your users are screaming that they want GUIs. It was just the coffee and donuts. For the most part in Chicago, though, they, those big customers are seeing that. And the other thing that they're seeing is that they need to run their businesses better in terms of costs and the like. And there's a lot of pressure that maybe it will be cheaper to run client server than it is to run integrated office. Be very careful. Those of you who've been in IS for a long time know that users will find applications to expand and consume every free bit of resource that becomes available. As you start to move those users down to the PC, yes, they're not using the server on the VAX, but guess what? They're going to want to start using Team Route. They're going to start using more converters. They will find applications that will use up all those MIPS. So if your management is pushing you saying, move this down to the desktop, you're going to free up resources, that will probably not be the case. But hopefully what will be the case is the people will be more productive. They will have more applications. There are more tools they'll be able to use. But our experience in most of the early pilots is you will not free up a huge VAX cluster by moving to client server. Other applications will take, its, will take their place. Team Links is not a replacement for all-in-one iOS. One of the big things that people have, have found is that users like that gold L functionality in, in all-in-one. And as you bring in Team Links, some people say, oh, this is great. I got a mouse, and I can click, and I can drag, and I can do this and that. And you'll have a whole bunch of other users say, I hate this. It's easier to just do gold and an L and everything comes up. So keep in mind, while you might like Windows or while some of your users might like Windows, you might have a lot of other people saying, no, this isn't really the type of thing I want. I like all-in-one iOS type functionality. And the other thing is, unfortunately, the migration from all-in-one to Team Links is not magic yet. We're working on it, but for the time being, it's not magic. It does take some planning, and those are the things I'd like to talk about now. All right. <laughs> I get so excited when it works, right? I'll tell you what, does, what was exciting. Um, I know you have PCs on your desk now and, and end up using them a lot as terminal emulators. How many of you do that right now? Any of you? Some of you. Okay, I was doing the same thing, and the first time I connected up Team Links to my all-in-one iOS file cabinet, and I got all 496 of my all-in-one documents to come up with little icons for red and for sent and all my drawers and all my folders, I was excited. I was almost speechless, and anybody here who knows me knows that doesn't happen very often. But it is really nice. Um, we've, done this very, we've done this product very well, as Steve said, in terms of how it's architected. And the end users do get very excited when you can show them what's in there. So going back to this, the areas to consider. I'm going to go through all of these in some detail. But keep in mind that if you have thousands of users, you probably have millions of documents in there. How many people here are running a system with more than 3,000 users? Some of you. OK, how about uh, more than a th uh, between, let's say, 1,000 and 3,000? some more. And it'll take the rest of probably under 1,000. Just think, if you don't have quotas set, or if you do have quotas set, multiply it out. And you could be looking at the millions of documents numbers. You've got to think about what's going to happen with that. Do you have applications? How many of you have customized systems that you have written applications for that are part of your business? Ah, we're going to talk about that. Keep in mind that it's more than, those systems are being used for more than just mail. You're going to have to think about how you're going to move those applications. How about DDS? How many people are currently running DDS? Not too many, about half. We'll talk about what's involved in that. And then, of course, system management and user training. Now, if your system's being used primarily for mail, or you have some users that are used primarily for mail, then you're in luck. All you really have to do is go into all-in-one and set their mail to auto-forward to all-in-one mail. And that's pretty easy. You give them the username, at AM is usually the mailbox you set up in message router for all-in-one mail, the name of the VAX, and the mail will just automatically be auto-forwarded to Team Links. The only restrictions on that are memos that have 
what we call functions attached to them, like a time management meeting request. Those type things will not be auto-forwarded. I'll talk some more about time management. But for the most part, all your messages go through. If you send a message to subscribers, subscribers is really all in one subscribers. So if you want to also include the Team Links people, you need to create with a little DCL procedure another list called at mail subscribers or something, because general subscribers messages in all in one do not get auto forwarded. That's the only restriction. And then the mail will go nicely right over to Team Links. Now those people probably have some personal files they're going to want to move over. And we have some utilities to do that, as Steve was saying. Turns out the all-in-one Team Link's personal address book, and I apologize that you haven't seen the demo yet. We usually do this after the demo, so you might not know what the personal address book is, but it comes up on the screen. It looks like a little, pers little address book with name, telephone number, those type things in it. That address book is very, is very easy to load with an ASCII file. It's just an ASCII file that's stored on the PC. So you can go into all-in-one, into the current nickname list that the user has, and we provide a utility where you can actually pull out their nickname list and transfer it to the personal address book on Team Links. Now, remember when you move people, their mail address changes. They're not at all-in-one anymore. They're now at AAM. So you may have to go through and change some of that information, but for the most part, you can load that. The same thing with personal distribution lists. The personal distribution lists or team links are just stored in a subdirectory. And you can modify where that subdirectory is, but all you have to do is take the distribution list, that file, off the all-in-one system and store it in where team links is going to look for the distribution list on your team link system, and you've got your personal distribution list move. So if someone's primarily a mail user, it's very easy. Just set auto forward, move their nicknames and distribution lists if they'd like. Now, one thing that makes all-in-one all-in-one nice for people is the flow is the same as you move through various all-in-one menus and the like in terms of how all-in-one people work through all-in-one. One thing that ni that's nice about Team Links is you can modify it for each user in terms of how it works. If you are bringing people over from VaxMail, for example, you can do some things in terms of setting preferences, which we'll be showing you in the demo so that it works more like VaxMail. If you're moving people from all-in-one, you can set your preferences so it works more like all-in-one. An example is with all-in-one, when you send a message, you keep a copy of it and it gets moved to your outbox. You can customize team links so that when you send a message, you keep it and it gets moved to your outbox. If you're a VMS user, the default is to not keep a copy at all. You can change team links so the default is to not keep a copy at all when you send it. Those types of things or preferences you can set in terms of how it works. Does a window stay open when I delete a message? Does the next message come, at, come up automatically when I delete a message? All those type things are in there. You can customize the look and feel to the extent that there's a button bar across the top. And you can customize which buttons appear on there. So if you're a mail-only user, the buttons that you use mostly for mail are the ones that you'll see on there. So we'll be showing you that more during the demonstration, but it does make it easier in terms of user training because you can set it up so it works and behaves more like all-in-one. Now, as you move people over, the biggest issue becomes what do you do about the documents that they have? Well, because you can reach into that all-in-one file cabinet, our suggestion is to leave the documents where they are in all-in-one. As Steve said, you can double-click on the document, bring up the WIPS Plus viewer, you can see it fine. There really isn't a need to move documents out of all-in-one unless you want to physically not let that person have access to that cabinet. So our suggestion is to just leave the documents all-in-one and let the people reach in and get them where they want. The only restrictions, if you're on all-in-one 3.0, there's something called reservations and groups where you can have shared drawers under 3.0 and you can actually reserve a document. Those types of things are not supported right now under, ver under Team Link's version 1.0. But that's the only restrictions with the file cabinet. Other than that, everything in the file cabinet works fine in terms of getting at the documents and the like. And this will be a lot easier than trying to move all those documents over. If you have to move, for whatever reason, policy, you decide you want to move people over, it will take time to move all those documents. Most of you, if you're system managers, are familiar with the all-in-one 
move user routine and what it does, unshares everything, puts it in the staging area, moves it, that same type of process for Team Links. It will take time. When you go to Team Links, there are no shared areas for mail. If you're using the Team Links file cabinet server, everybody has their own copy of the message. The reason being that they can each have it in a different format. We'll talk more about converters. But the reason everybody has their own copy is so that I can have mine in Word Perfect and Pam can have hers in Microsoft Word and someone else can have it in something else when it comes in. So you're going to need disk space. Make sure if you decide to take all those documents out of all in one that you're going to have enough disk space when you put them in there. And the last point is that attributes are lost when you move from all in one to team links, meaning that if you take a message out of all in one, store it in team links, and then try to bring it back to all in one, you'll not have the addressing information like on there to go ahead and reply to that message, those kind of attributes. When you move it, you're actually moving it from one mail system to another when you're using the mail work server. So once you move it out of that mail system, it takes any attributes that were native to that mail system get stripped off that document. Now, that normally isn't a problem unless you have a very large distributed company and you'd work in one division and I would say, in, in this division, you move me off all in one, put me on team links, and then I go to another division that doesn't have team links and you want to put me back into all in one. You'd have a problem then. So once you move the people to team links, you're not going to want to move them back to all in one. So if you have a very large company with all in one implemented throughout the world or throughout the country, and you have people moving a lot from division to division, you have to keep that in mind, that once you move them to team links, the attributes you would need to move them back wouldn't be there. Here we go again. OK, conversions. When you do move these documents, let's say you do decide to move some of these documents down, you need to decide, are you just going to move them down in their native format and store them on the PC, or are you going to change the format of the documents? For the most part, as Steve said, most of our users do not want to use WIPS Plus as their Windows editor of choice. They want to use WordPerfect, Ami Pro, those type things, which means you're probably going to have to convert those WIPS Plus documents. Now, you've got a couple of choices. You can convert them to ASCII. And for most of the mail messages and the like you'd be moving, that's probably fine. It's cheap. It's easy. The other thing would be to use a converter like KeyPack or one of those third-party converters to actually transfer it from WIPS Plus format to something like WordPerfect format. Now, what we found in the early sites that were trying to do this was if you have, again, thousands of users with you know, 500 to 1,000 documents each, there's got to be an easier way of doing this than one at a time. So we have a little utility that's been written, and what it allows you to do is give the all-in-one user an index screen. They go in there, and they mark off the documents they want to transfer. At that point, it works similar to the all-in-one move user routine. It takes the documents, put them in a staging area. If you want to run them through a converter, key pack or the like, it'll put them through the converter, and then it will put them into the Team Link's mail cabinet. So we do have that utility that you can use to do that in terms of migrating the documents. But again, keep in mind that it's probably best and easiest to just keep the documents on the all-in-one system and have them reach into that. I won't spend too long on uh, time management. <coughs> Steve covered it, except to say that right now we have no utility to transfer data between all-in-one and Network Scheduler 3. Now, Network Scheduler 3 does have the capability to accept the flat file in with scheduling data. So if you do have users who are heavy time management users and they want some sort of historical file of what they had on all in one and they've got appointments loaded for the next year and you want to load them into Network Scheduler, the functionality is there in Network Scheduler to do that. We haven't written a utility to do that because most of our customers have said that is not a requirement. They don't have many users fitting that, that profile. But if you do, Either you can write the utility or we can write the utility. The functionality is there. Probably the easiest thing right now for a pilot is to pick, and I'll talk about that, is to pick users who are not using heavy terminal, uh, who are not heavy time management users and who can get by with just doing terminal emulation into all-in-one for the few times they need to use time management with people who are on all-in-one and for the most part try to get them to use 
the group scheduling and network schedule of three in terms of the individual scheduling and the group type scheduling. And that, uh, Steve, when did you say you thought the uh, utility would be there to talk to all in one? Uh, no. Okay, so, okay. And at that point, then you'll have some more options in terms of connecting in. Now, when I asked how many people were running DDS, only about half of you raised your hand. The DEC Mailworks server uses DDS as its only directory. So unlike all-in-one, where you have a choice of using profile or using DDS, you have to have DDS for Mailworks. Now, that means if you have a 2,000 user system and you want to bring up 10 people for a pilot and you don't have DDS implemented, you would have to enter in the 1,990 people who aren't on DDS for those 10 people to send mail to. So again, we've written a utility. We have a little utility that goes into the all-in-one profile, basically extracts the information you would need for DDS, and loads up DDS if you don't already have it loaded. Now, as you move users back and forth from all-in-one to DDS, you'd have to do, you'll have to you know, change user profiles and the like. But all that initial loading is done for you. Again, if you decide to use all-in-one later on as your server and not go with the DEC team link server, then your current profile and network.dat and the like will be available to those team link clients. But for right now, I'm talking about the DEC mail work server. So you would have to bring up DDS. Now, one of the biggest difficulties when you go to PC-type client-server environments from an all-in-one centralized environment is that, by definition, personal computer means people can put up what they want on the PC. Now, you as IS and business managers will have to de de yeah, decide what you want to support. Will you let people use any word processor and spreadsheet of, ch of choice? Will you limit it to two? Will you limit it to five? But once you've made those decisions, then you have to decide how you're going to put the proper software in place for people to exchange information between those various packages. You basically have three choices. And Steve covered these, but I'm going to review them again because it's real important when you run a pilot to think about this, how you're going to implement it when you roll it out. You can do conversions on the PC. Team Links comes with converters. Some of the packages come with converters. And you could just tell everybody they're in charge of their own conversions. The DEC Mailwork server can also automatically make conversions. So you can set it up so that as mail comes in, it's automatically com converted for each user to whatever format that user chooses. That would happen on your DEC Mailwork server rather than on the PC. Some of the advantages to that, if you need to buy some sophisticated converters, like for some of the CAD packages and the like, may be cheaper to put it on the server than it is to put it on each PC. There's a third option available. If you have a network that has multiple mail implementations on it, you've got Banyan, and you've got Beyond Mail, and you've got this, and you've got that, and people have different word processors, you can hook them up to the mail bus and actually put the converter on the mail bus. It's like an extra stop on your store and forward network. And when messages get to this stop, they get checked. And if the user is coming from a system that can tag the file, then the converter says, ah, this is a WordPerfect file, or this is a WIPS Plus file. It knows what it is. If it can't be tagged, it has a sniffer. It opens it up and tries to sniff and find out what's in there. Then it goes into DDS, and you have all the users in DDS, and it says, OK, what format do the users on this message need to receive it in? And based on that, it will automatically convert the message and then send it on its way through the store and forward network. So if you have a very distributed mail system, very um, heterogeneous in terms of various lands and the like, you can do things like put the converter on there. You can also put a direct resynchronizer on there to sync between team links all in one and your Banyan mail and your CC mail and all the other mails and the like. So you need to think about the conversion in terms of where you're going to want this to happen as you move the client server. Do you want it on the PC? Do you want it on the DEC Mailwork server? Or do you need to really go back and look at your entire backbone and perhaps put it on the mail bus backbone? So conversions are one of the main things you're going to want to look at during a pilot. Now, just quickly in terms of uh, how conversion is implemented, on the all-in-one side, if you're a system manager, you're familiar with some, something called a format master file, where all-in-one has in there basically a little ta format tag that says, this document is such and such a document, and here's what you bring up to edit it. 
So for WIPS Plus documents, you bring up WIPS Plus. For WordPerfect documents, you bring up WordPerfect. What you need to do on there for PC files, if you're going to allow people to store PC files up on the server, which some people might want to do, because then they can archive them and the like, you need to just go into that format master and for the PC ones, just put NA for editor, not applicable, so that someone won't try to get a Word for Windows document into all-in-one and edit it with WIPS Plus, because without a converter between them, it's pretty ugly. <laughs> so those kind of things need to be done on all-in-one. The other thing is uh, conversion formats and tagging, just there really aren't very good standards in place. Even between the packages that run on multiple platforms, some of them don't understand the format going from a Mac to a Windows to a VMS platform, even from the same vendor. And there's no consistency in the tagging. So this whole area of conversions and the like is going to be your biggest headache when you move to client server today in terms of uh, the spreadsheets and the word processing packages, the two most popular ones. Now, we have tested the all-in-one to um, WordPerfect integration with the WordPerfect Team Links integration, and that works very well. You can go in and put the tags in there. So those of you who are running the WordPerfect under all-in-one, that does work very well. The last major area you're going to have to worry about is application migration. Now, when I asked how many of you had customized systems with applications, several of you raised your hand. Those applications are probably applications that you're running your business on, and you can't just cut out overnight. Most all-in-one applications were developed to meet specific business needs. You basically have three choices. You can just leave everything on VMS and all-in-one for the time being. And that's probably the most efficient choice today. You can give them terminal emulation to get back in there. Or there are some neat things you can do with scriptable terminal emulators like Dynacom or some of the development tools that are out there like Visual Basic. Now, Steve talked briefly about WinRMS. WinRMS is actually a DLL implementation that we've written, which will allow you to go from a Windows application into an RMS database. Now, most of your all-in-one applications are all going to RMS databases today. So what that means is you can put a Visual Basic front end that will go to that application just as you have a uh, command line front end today. So instead of hitting R to do something in your particular application or SD to store data, they would click on a button that says SD to store data. But they would all be going to the same RMS file on the VAX. So that's a real neat way of doing it. There are also scriptable terminal, terminal emulators like Dynacom that allow you to do the same type of thing, have them click on a button and actually send a command to the VAX. So in terms of applications, leaving the data on the VAX is probably the easiest way to do that right now. The other thing we would encourage you to look at a pilot also is, can you replace that application? I'll give you an example. Some of the places that have customized all-in-one have done it for sales reps to store call data. And most of that call data that the sales rep stores in terms of customer name, what happened on the last call, is really particular to that sales rep and doesn't need to be shared with other people. It's very easy today to buy an out-of-the-box Windows application that allows that sales rep to do the same thing. So some of the applications that you wrote under all-in-one, you may be able to now replace with new technology with applications right out of the box. And maybe you don't even have to bring them over. And then the last choice would be to redesign the entire application to try to run in a Windows-type environment and still be shareable. Now, the difficulty with that today is in the databases. Some of the PC databases allow concurrent access, but for a lot of them, that you can't do what you can do with RMS. But you really need to look at those applications as part of your pilots and decide what you're going to do for the rollout in terms of all those applications today. Okay, system management. Um, there were a couple of questions that came up to Steve at the end with regards to system management. The design center of all-in-one was a centralized system. And even though you could customize it for individual users, most customers didn't do that. You customized it by group. It also had sophisticated custom, uh, customization management tools. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to manage because it's in the third release already. It's third generation of the product, whereas Team Links is a version one of the product. It's going to grow just like All-in-One did, especially in the system management area. And Team Links is designed where the user 
is king. And so you have individual applications. Each user has their own thing. So in terms of system management, it's completely different. You, you don't have the control that you had with a centralized system. Um, how many of you have LANs up and running right now of some type? OK, just about everybody. So I'm not telling you anything when I tell you when you go to LAN administration, that's another whole new ball game in terms of how do you connect up all those PCs, how do you back them up, uh, do software installations, upgrades. As Steve brought up, we have a number of tools that we can give you to help you do that. Our Pathworks products has a lot of nice things built into it. But as you move from centralized all-in-one to client server, this whole area of LAN administration has to be taken care of. And then you also have now another server running with the Team Link server. And if you bring up Team Route, you have a Team Route server running. If you're not running DDS, you now have to manage the DDS server. So in terms of processes on the VAX and additional servers, all of those are going to have to be administrated. Your converters are going to have to be put up there. Now, in terms of system management, All-in-One has some very nice utilities to help you keep your users in check in terms of disk quotas and clean mail and those type things. Team Links, it's a user system. The user can do what they want. However, uh, what we found is that they started using up all the space on the VAX. That's what I said before about consuming all available resources. So we have written a utility. There is a janitor utility that you can run on the all-in-one mail server that's similar to clean mail. Go through, all, go through a certain list of folders, get out all the messages that are older than a certain amount of time type thing, and clean it up for the user. So there are some basic utilities written. But the whole concept, the whole design center of Team Links is that it's a user-centered system. So you don't have this, the sophisticated um, all-in-one type centralized system management. Now, the most important thing in moving from client, from timeshare to client server is running a good pilot. The pilot is what's going to tell you what's unique about your environment, your company, your users, your business environment, and the things you're going to need to know before you do a full-blown implementation. So our suggestion to you is to start as soon as possible with a pilot. And we suggest the 10 to 20 user pilot. Don't get too many people involved at once. Get a manageable number. For the first pilot, you should try to get people who already have very well equipped PCs and no Windows and are very much PC literate. Now, after you do the first pilot and get some initial learnings, you're going to have to do additional pilots with people who don't know PCs and the like to figure out what the learning curve is going to be. But for this learning curve, bite off a manageable chunk. Get people who already know the PC, who know Windows, and figure out what it's going to take just to move from all-in-one to Team Links. If you can find people who are predominantly male users, that's even better because you won't have some of the hassles with uh, some of the applications and how you're going to move that and some of the time management type things. And right now, this version of Team Links requires Pathworks if you're going to be on a network, if you don't want to use that CTI asynchronous connection. So if you can find a group that's already up and running and familiar with Pathworks, that'll make it easier, too. Hardware, make sure they have a big enough system. 486 would be nice. You need at least a 386. Uh, you need at least 4 megabytes of memory. It would be nice if they had more. Don't try to put it buy on a minimal system because you'll spend all your time tuning for memory and that type of thing. So try to go with people who have big systems. If you want to run this on your current VAC system, you can. None of this requires a separate hardware. It is separate server processes for Pathworks, for DeckMail works, for TeamRoute. So if you're going to run it on your current system, make sure you have enough capacity both in disk space and in CPU resources. If you're going to put Pathworks and all this other stuff on your current all-in-one production system, make sure you're not at the limit and you're not going to bring down all those all-in-one iOS users when you bring this on there. So on the server side as well as the hardware side, make sure you have sufficient capacity. Uh, the server requirements, again, you need Pathworks, and we don't care what the topology is. If you're using Novell, that Pathworks Novell coexistence product, works fine. Uh, you can do asynchronous connection, but as Steve said, the speed is not very good. It's fine for a pilot if you have some people on laptops and they want to pilot how it works from laptops or they want to see how it works from home, that type thing. But I wouldn't recommend running the entire pilot asynchronously. You should have some people up on Pathworks and 
see how that works. So to finish up here, what we really, what we really feel you need to do is go out and tell your management, yeah, we understand we got these expensive PCs that are being used as terminal emulators, and we want to move forward looking at uh, what it's going to take to move us to the next generation of Office. And start off by doing some planning with a select group of users in terms of getting information about your current Office system and finding the people who are best set up to be your pilot users for the Team Links pilot. When you're ready to do that, get those people, move them from all in one to Team Links, keeping careful track of what kind of calls are coming into your help desk, what are the problems you're running into, how much system resources are being used, all that type of information. Because the whole outcome of the pilot is the, the input for the next stage, which is the preparation for the big move and how you're going to move people across. So the pilot will tell you what you need in terms of DDS, conversion strategies, what are you going to do with those documents in the file cabinet, what are you going to do about the applications, are you going to be able to use Team Route, is that going to be um, a high value application for the company. All those things will come out of the preparation stage. And once you've done the pilot, you may find you need to do a second pilot or a third pilot with people who've never used PCs maybe to find out what kind of learning curve they're going to have and those type of things, remote users. Once the pilot's done and the preparation is done and you're ready to move, our advice is to move slowly but steadily. Put in a plan that takes 20 users, 100 users, whatever you can support by department, by groups, and moves them according to a certain schedule. Don't let management or end users pressure you into moving a thousand people or something overnight if you don't have the staff to do that. Put together a good plan that shows steady progress. If you move in chunks with the number of users that you can manage at a time and you've done a good pilot, this works well. The icon right here, Team Link's Information Manager, is what we use to bring up the product. Then we'll go into the Information Manager. You see these other, well, from the other icons, we can get at some of the Team Link's information. For instance, before Steve was talking about when we were in Word or we're in Excel, we have access to the Team Link's information from that perspective also. So I'll show you that in a little bit. It asks for a password so we can connect to the mail system. So when we go into Team Link's, this is what it looks like, OK? Right at the top, you have your regular pull-down menus, as one would expect. Then we also have lots of shortcuts. Across this the second bar, we have a, a button bar. And you notice whatever button I'm on, underneath it, it tells you what the button is for. You know, the guy writing, well, he's creating a message. You get used to these very fast. Down here, we have the drawers, OK? Once we click on a drawer, double click on a drawer, it opens up and we see folders. And inside our folders, we see documents. OK, just like we have in all in one, we have the drawer folder document concept. So it's the same thing. Now, if we were to have connected to the all in one system, we would have seen the files that you've had for years and years, as uh, Sue was saying before, her 460 uh, documents. You'd have drawers, folders, and documents. Now you'd have icons that tell you, you know, a little drawer, a little folder, a little document. And you'll also notice that in, within these documents, there are other icons. The icon right here is a funny little icon that is actually for routing. Okay? The documents are going from one individual to another individual to another individual. Okay? If we were to open, for instance, the mail drawer, and maybe we go into these, we see in, in the mail we have envelopes. Now, this is the back of the envelope. These envelopes have been read, as opposed to if we go into the inbox, we have one thing in there. We say that that looks like a letter with a postage stamp on it. It has not been read. Okay, so the icons help you walk through, tell you whether you've read it, tell you where you are in the status of this information. If you see up here, we have an exclamation point. Well, this is an urgent message. If we had a little CC on the side, you would know that you'd be carbon copied on that memo. You were not one of the original recipients of that memo. 
So let me close up some of these files. I just double click on them. Or I could go up here and viewing, I could tell it that I would like to collapse all and then it will scrunch it back up if I am on the right one. Collapse all. Okay? What I'd like to do is, first thing is create a message. The first time you go into Team Links, it'll start the Team Links messaging. And then from then on, you have the background, background process of the message system. So you don't have to wait for that to come up. Now here, when we go to create a message, you could just say, in the two fields, you could just type Tom Smith. Who likes to type when you have a mouse? So we'll click on the two field. It will come up with my personal address book. In here, I have all these different names. I can choose from anybody who's in my personal address book. OK, I have my, my bar up here, so I can select, you know, I can scroll down or scroll up if I want. But what I would do is I would just click on a name, throw it in the to field, and now it's addressed for me. Or I could have chosen multiple names if I wanted to. You know, with, with the mouse, you can use the shortcuts such as hold down the shift key and click the mouse, and it'll select that entire range of names, OK? If you know what um, regular Windows shortcuts are, go right ahead. They're in this product. If I wanted to use maybe a distribution list, maybe I want to send it to all the VPs, fine. Okay? And there are ways also, the panel will talk, well, there are ways that you can hook into those distribution lists that you already have. Because I know every all-in-one, every one, every all-in-one account out of there uses multiple, multiple distribution lists. Okay? So really what you would do with this product is you would have a pointer pointing to that other distribution list, and then it'll send out the original distribution list that you have out there. All right? So this is how I, I address things. All right. So we send it to Bob Palmer. We say, Bob Pollard, we say, OK. Now I can type in the subject, the important subject, and my message. This is the messages. This is the message. And then what do I do? Well, if I wanted to, I could add an attachment, or I could just send it. I could save it. I could look at the send attributes, go into my personal address book. Oh, I have lots of options. I just want to send it. Click on send, and it sends it right out. Now, if I wanted to go through a little bit more information on creating a mail message, this time I'll go into the to field, I'll pick, a, pick someone, and here I'll add an attachment. See that little paper clip there? and tells me what attachment do I want. Well, automatically it would go into my filing cabinet, which I can't connect to. The reason it goes out to the filing cabinet is so it can give me, if I wanted to attach something from the filing, from my all-in-one system, I could do that. Or if I wanted to attach something anywhere on my PC, I could attach that. Well, I have tons of resources on this PC. And it's not just on my hard drive here. As we were talking before, if you have files out on your network, you can attach anything that's, that this PC actually can access. So cancel that. And it'll go out to other information that I have right here. Um, in the different drawers that I have, maybe I wanted to attach something that's in you know, one of my other drawers. I'll go into my mail drawer, and I'll go into there. Then I can attach this document. And it tells me, in this area, it tells me what I am attaching. OK? You can attach whatever you want. If I wanted to save it, I could proceed to save it. Here's something I want to show you, the send attributes. When I send a document out, OK, it knows my personal name, my location. So it has the regular personal information. And then before you heard that this is X400 compliant, X400 P2, big deal. What does that mean for me is really the question. What it means is that it, this product adheres to those mail standards such that it has the full suite of mail things in it. So if other mail systems are sending you information that needs uh, re read receipt, um, it needs to be forwarded on. It, it has all the extra, well, let's see, let's go through these things. It ha if you want something to be designated as company confidential, you can specify that in this product. Now, when do you need company confidential? 
Well, a lot of the networks these days, you have your network, your company's network, attached so that you can talk to some of your customers. Well, if you put company confidential on there, it'll be a flag such that it won't go outside your network. Okay, you can set it up so that it, you know, it comes up. It will come up and say, this is a company confidential document. Okay, and will not go outside those barriers. Or you can set up documents that are restricted, personal, private. Okay, you have a lot of extra capability on that. Maybe it's an important document. This is where you would set up if it was an urgent document. All right, you have your priorities. Some of this is a regular all-in-one stuff. Well, down here we have something new, too. Expires. You can set up an expiration notice. So if you're inviting somebody to go to a meeting, maybe. This meeting is next Thursday at 2 o'clock. Well, little do you know that person's on vacation right now. They don't get the message until Friday. Yet another mail message they have to read that's worthless. Well, if you have an expiration notice on there, since the, mail, the meeting is on Thursday, it doesn't do any good if they meet, read the message after that. So you can just have the, the notice expire at that time. All right? Or maybe reply by. You want someone to reply who may be using that meeting. You want them to reply that they're going to the meeting, you know, sometime before Wednesday, so you know how many sandwiches to have. Right? So there's a lot of functionality in here for the mail. Let me just show you the personal address book. Here's the personal address book um, of which Sue was speaking about earlier. Okay, these are the names in my personal address book. All right? And I can get all this information right from the DDS. And I would just click on the DDS entry and it'll put it into my personal address book. And if I wanted to, I could even go out to the direct, well, I can't go to the directory services because I don't have the connection. Normally, I could go to the directory services, and the directory services would just show me a list of all the individuals who are out there, and I could just um, click on their name so it would highlight it, and then I would say, add it to my personal address book, and it would do that. Or else I could choose to, um, instead of saying add it to my personal address book, I would say add it to the message, and it, I could send to that individual. All right, so you have access to all those individuals. Okay, so let's send this message, and that goes on through. All right, what else do we have in here? Well, let's look at some of the, the pull-down options. Um, you know what I want to go into? The ones that are real all-in-one-like. When you go into setup, you can set up your environment. In the mail profile, when we have send attributes, you know, like an all-in-one when you send a message out and it's stored in your all-in-one system in your outbox? You can set this up such that it's stored in whatever files you want, wherever you want it to be stored. Okay? So here we have place sent copies in, well, we put it in mail and outbox because we like it to be consistent because we're used to the all-in-one area. Somebody else may want their messages stored in another drawer in a folder. Fine. Okay? And draft messages, where should we put those? Maybe you want to keep a send copy on these different actions. Okay, so this is user selectable, whatever they want their environment to look like. And if you, since you're coming from all-in-one environments, everybody except for one up here, um, it's good if you set this up ahead of time so you have the standard so that the users can select to change it if they want. But when they come into their system, they see it and it'll look just like the, the all-in-one environment from that perspective. All right? And then you set up your standard. Um, is it in, you know, company confidential as the standard, or maybe it's uh, just not restricted as the standard message? And then they can modify it from that point. Delivery notification. All right. What class it is. All right. And we have a very similar thing for the receive attributes. Where do you want to place your new mail that comes in? When messages are read, where do they go at this point? Correlate notifications. This is great. You send a message out inviting 10 people to a meeting. What used to happen in all-in-one iOS? You get 10 messages back. You have to figure out who does it. In this system, it'll correlate it for you. So you can see on that message that you sent out for the meeting, Pete, check, Tom, nothing, John, check. You'll see who's going to that meeting and who's not going to the meeting. So you don't have to collate these things for yourself. Okay, the system will take care of it for you. And here also, there's um, different uh, file formats. So for the Team Links comes with converters and viewers and such. And we have to tell it where, um, 
what you're using so it knows what it can convert. Okay, if you get documents in, say you get a, um, a graphics document in. Well, was that one of the ones that can be converted? How does it convert? It needs to know what are the packages that can be converted. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's close that, and now what I'd like to show you is some of the routing capabilities, okay? One of the products in here is Team Route, allows you to route documents for um, authorization and approval. This is what Steve was talking about when he was talking about the PC audit, so you can route documents or you can route executables out there, so you can install different software products on all these different PCs. we go into templates, what we have here is a list of the different templates that actually come with the product when the product is shipped. And then there's two other templates that I just created, one last night, one this morning. All right? So these are the types of things that the product comes with. Asking a question. Actually, asking a question. First I saw that and I said, why is that a routing application? That's kind of silly. But then I thought about it and I said, every single account has a help desk. Every single account has people who have questions that go to that help desk. And it usually goes to a central person who says, huh, I don't take care of that. Tom does that or Mary does that. Well, this way, the document, you can initiate it from your desk saying, you know, this, doesn't, this isn't working like I expected. What is the way that it should work? Or whatever your question is. It gets routed to the central person. And then that person can take the document and route it onto the individual responsible for taking action on that. And then you, as the initiator, know who this document was sent along to. Okay. All right, so let me close that up, and I'll go in, and we can look at this team route document that was created last night. First, when you go into team route, what it does is it comes up with instructions, okay? You're opening this application, and here's what you should be doing with it. So whenever you encounter a team route document, you know that there's certain action that has to happen here. If you click on it too many times, you get this message. All right. So here's my team route document. Once again, we have the pull-down menus at the top, as we would expect. We have the button bars up here. And these are a little different. This one you can route. This one, add attachment. This one will be delete attachment. Sign. Or maybe view the history. Where has it been and what have these people done to this document as it was routed along whatever path it took? Okay, so it gives you the type of document it is, the date, who initiated it, and what it's about. And then there's a routing list, okay? It, it's going from me, okay, the initiator, and it's going to go out to two other individuals. Now I'll get into what roles each one of us play in a moment. But let's see, what's this document all about? Well, there's three different sections to this document at this point. Now we see these icons on the left here. The top one is an icon that is just, it's a meeting notification form. In here is just a basic little form that tells you what the, there's a meeting and here's what it's about. Okay, so here's a meeting on Project J and the agenda is to review the manuals on Project J. Okay. Now attached to that is a document and it's a non-revisable document. Documents can be sent revisable or non-revisable. All right? It tells you if it's not revisable. If it were revisable, it would just allow you to revise it. Here, it's giving you a warning instead. Now, you notice this document, launched Word, OK? In Team Links, when you add attachments, it goes and it launches that application. It doesn't come up and say, oh, can't do this, it's a Word document. Go all back out, open Word, and throw this into Word, and then you'll be able to use it. Now, it works like one would like it to work, okay? So here's, here's the document, and we can go through and review this so we know what's, you know what's in Project J, and we can read the whole manual. That's one of the attachments here. And now, added to that, you look at this icon, and you might be able to guess, it's a spreadsheet. Once again, not revisable. It launches Excel. 
Okay, you get the idea? It launches the applications that it needs. All right. So now the person who's working on Project J and reviewing all these documents, before they go to the meeting, they can review this information. They can make comments. They can add comments to this. Now also on Team Route, it's the authorization. Uh, we have the authorization capability in there. So once I get a document, before I send it along, I either I sign it. Now up here is where I sign. And what do I do? I either can approve, disapprove, or acknowledge. Yeah, I saw it, but I'm not going to do either. PC applications. In here, we're talking about some of the uh, applications that you can use with Team Links. Right here, what we did was brought the conferencing, okay, the old notes product, now that has a MS Windows interface, and so much easier to use. We brought this right into the Team Links environment. And here you can go in and open your notes conference, and you can actually do pointing and clicking getting around these documents. So that using notes is so much easier than it, it's ever been. All right, and then you just go into your notes files. Okay, so this is your bulletin board conferencing right from in Team Links. Then you, if you wanted to take one of these documents right from in here, you could mail it out, send it to somebody. You could copy it down. Maybe you wanted to save it, um, ex, you know, save it into your PC file or one of the filing cabinets that's available to you, your all-in-one filing cabinet. Okay, so right from inside notes. Now I want to show you, if you're outside notes, how do you get this information? Well, let's go out to, maybe you're in Word or you're in Excel. All right, let's go to, let's go to Excel. And right from in Excel, remember we were talking about some macros before that these uh, Microsoft has created for their products, such that it works with team links. You can be right in Excel working on your spreadsheet, and at that point, if you want to mail the document, no problem. What you would do is you go into File, and you would look down in File, and you see this thing called Send Mail. And it'll go, and it'll open up your mail cabinet. Let's type the correct password. And right from in Excel. Okay, so Team Links is, is on your system. You're not in Team Links. You're in Excel. And it has the functionality of Excel. And you could save it into your filing cabinet there also. Okay? Goes right to that same mail that we saw two minutes ago. Are there any questions? All right, if we'll move along, Pam will come on with the, uh, just the, the ending of this presentation. I just have a few slides that will kind of summarize what we've talked about and talk about some direct ordering information for those customers who are going to get started immediately, which we wish is every one of you who are out there. Um, I think Sue made a good point, and I only want to reinforce it. The, the purpose of planning and piloting for the success of the project. Without that, there will be difficulties. If you know what you're getting into, you choose your users, and you then map out a plan to move past there, you'll be much better off. Digital does offer services, too. Um, if client server is not well understood within your organization. There is something called a client server workshop that could be done on site to help your organization better understand it and how it applies to the direct business you're in. As well as the standard office analysis and planning services that you could use to understand what's actually being done in the office and what it will take to move that to the next type of environment. There's a second bullet on this slide which is managing the change and we've talked many times about this being a new paradigm and the change that it will involve so that will be important to take into account as you move ahead with going to client server office systems now we talked about piloting and we talked about the success of piloting and trying to limit the number of users well to help in that effort there is a package system available from digital that's called the team links entry system package 
and it is a microvac system with all the necessary licenses and startup consulting services bundled into it to ensure a quick, easy startup. Benefits of something like this are that it will not in any way impact your normal production system. Most people will say, well, I already have a vax and I don't really need another system. Some things that have to be considered are how much extra capacity is left on your current system. You're running in a dual environment mode for a while, so it will take up extra cycles on your system. The last thing you want to do is impact your production users. The other thing you want to do is you want to make it a controlled environment. You don't want to run any risk of upsetting your production system by doing a pilot. So for some of those reasons, it makes a lot of sense to look at a separate bundle system for a pilot group. And as you would work through a pilot implementation strategy, that could be your pilot group for more people, and then maybe you move people back onto your production system then as you go through the different groups. The package system that's available, as I said, is a hardware and software combination. And there's some important information down there at the bottom with the 100 hours of consulting. There's a startup type service that comes along with it that will ensure the success of getting those first 10 users up and running. And the tools that we've been talking about with the janitor utility and that are available through this service. Now those tools can also be made available to your local offices that can be bundled into a custom consulting project if you wanted it or the, surface package, the service packaged alone. So in the end, I'll talk a little bit more about if you want more information on those, how we can get that to you. If you elect to try and roll your own Team Links type pilot, um, I've got a couple slides here to talk about the packaging of Team Links and things to consider to ensure that you order the correct things or work with your account managers to order the correct things. Team Links currently comes in three flavors. There's basically the Team Links Information Manager, which includes the file cabinet services we've been talking about, the mail services we've been talking about, and the team route services that we've been talking about. There's another level of packages for Team Links that does include the browser utility that allows you to browse through your files, as well as your conferencing client, the, the Microsoft Windows conferencing client, as well as additional converters and viewers. There is a third Team Links package available that incorporates not only the first two I've talked about, but the Microsoft applications as well. For those customers who are either selecting those or want to do one-stop shopping to get a fully integrated kit of Team Links, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now the flexibility digital offers in licensing can be the blessing and the headache. And by that I mean we offer the ability to get these packages as license only or license and media and documentation. How you're familiar to getting current PC packages when you pick up your Word kit and it would have all the floppies documentation in there. Um, we find users want to be able to do license only in those situations where it becomes cost prohibitive or just too much paper and too much storage needed for all the kits to have media and documentation. We also sell kits with client and server licenses together or just client licenses. The reason for this is if you elect that you want to license your team route server as a cluster base on a whole system, then you could just buy client licenses for team links. If you elect that you want to buy one for one and just license it on a personal use license as many of the other digital software products, you can get a team links kit that, that bundles your client and your server license. So if we look at that, many variants come out of that and there could be a whole list. What I've listed here, the QB part numbers are media and documentation kits for server or for client and server packages. If you elect that you're going to be licensing on your server on a cluster-wide basis, here I've listed the server part numbers for both your DEC MailWorks server to act as your switch for all your mail products, as well as your team route server, and for those people interested, the VAX Note server. Video text is licensed a little differently. There is a Windows type client available for video text. The ability for that comes with video text itself. So when you have video text, you have that client and you can just bring it into the environment under Team Links. One thing we hope to leave you with are the three bullets that we've listed on this slide. Team Links offers the best client server office scenario for the all-in-one environment. The access into the all-in-one iOS cabinet, the future direction of all-in-one moving to the new platforms, 
as well as it being broken apart and becoming a full client server offering is something that you won't be able to get from any other choice you might make for an office system. TeamLace kind of blends the best of both worlds to make end users happy with Microsoft Windows, personal productivity applications, and the environment they want to set up and still allow some control, security, and reliability for the IS managers. And we've given a lot of thought to what it's going to take to move from one environment to the other environment. We want to share that with you through sessions like this, through the services we can provide, through the utilities that are available too. We think that it will make your implementation time faster and easier, and we think you'll be more prone for success, and management will like you much better because of that.